video you're about to see is a reaction video. It is a video of opinion. Nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos. My volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Now you may notice that I'm doing certain things with my hands. I am not making any secret hand signs or gestures. When one is doing public speaking, there's only so many things you can do with your hands. You can fold them, maybe put them on your hips, dangling lifelessly at your sides, put them in your pockets, hold them like this, whatever it is. I'm not making any type of signaling gestures, unless I do this, which means shaka. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Thanks and enjoy. I came across, well, I was actually sent to me, uh, a podcast called uh, The All Cast, I think it's called. Um, I, I don't know who it... I'm on the on the uh, the web page, but it doesn't say who the all cast is by or anything like that. But I was about to listen to it because it's an interview with Russell J. Gould, and of course, it's written in complete shite grammar. Someone's best attempt, I guess, at writing quantum grammar, but it's actually quantum gobbledygook. But I was going to listen to it. I thought, well, hey, why not have a like a listening party and listen to it with my YouTube viewers if they so choose to come on board. So I'm going to play it on my iPad and I'm going to listen to it and then uh, basically, quote unquote, react to it, I guess, in the live stream. So this is, again, this is from a podcast called The All Cast. So let's start. When was it published? October 23rd, 2023. Today's episode is with Russell J. Gould. Russell makes some incredible claims that sound fantastic in good ways and in questionable ways. But every once in a while, it takes something fantastic to change the planet this hold up there son change is modification and modification is perjury why you want to be modifying the planet son it's very important it is one of the most important conversations i have ever had even if it hadn't been recorded it would still be just as important i'm happy that i was able to get Russell J. Gould in here to actually record it face to face. Uh, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. America in one word. Free. Hold up, hold up. One thing I want to point out, because whether you know me or you don't know me or know who I am or how long I've been doing this, I've been doing this for a while, okay? I've been doing this for years. I have a lot of material under, under my belt. I've listened to a lot of audio, watched a lot of video, thousands, literally thousands of hours video and things like that and i have found that the majority of people who have interviewed russell j gould the majority of people that he's come in contact with or tried to work with it turns sour like it goes sour no one usually continues any type of relationship with the guy like they usually have a very good first meeting or maybe second meeting and they're all hyped about it. 
But then something goes wrong and it turns sour. And then usually you will hear either Russell J. Gould and his people will either never mention it again or they will in turn badmouth the other people. And you, you can find this. You just look through all the people he's ever come in contact with as far as other, um, you know, other known public, I guess you would call them influencers or figures. Just a few names that come to mind, like Sasha Stone, uh, David Avocado Wolf, I think is his name. Uh, Lady Crown, Purple Thumb Community. Um, who is the one, uh, and I can't remember this one uh, woman who was actually a very, very good journalist and she was in contact with everybody. Uh, well, I can't think of her name right now, <clears throat> but just about anybody that has ever come in contact with him breaks bulk with him or he breaks bulk with them. Now, I, I have to say that there are several reasons for this, but I'm not going to share them right now. Let's just continue to, to listen to this. We are the land of the free and the home of the brave. We could not have accomplished such a society without the freedoms fought for by our recent ancestors, people that are currently alive, our fathers, our father's fathers, and those who came to this land separating from Great Britain. Yes, yes, the same people that committed genocide upon the native population here. Those same people that enjoyed, you know, wanted freedom and they wanted to separate from the crown, but yet they had no problem poisoning and murdering the people that already existed on North America. Yes, we, we're well aware of the character of our ancestors, yes. It seems like the land of the free is becoming less free right now it seems like the bravery has become extreme complacency on the part of the average american if the contents of this conversation you're about to hear are true to their core then this is the most important set of information for humans all over this planet i highly encourage you to listen to the entire conversation it is easy in today's world to dismiss things that don't make sense at first. Our brains have been shaped by the cadence of screens. Dismiss, by the way, folks, means no miss. So if you dismiss it, it means you don't miss it. Advertisements and now social media feeds. If we don't comprehend or appreciate something we see in the first few seconds, generally we dismiss it. Today's episode is simple and complex. The concept of divorcing the system or overwriting the system is simple. The means to get there and how that could even work, now that is complex and it requires longer focus. So listen up. I suppose if you're a part of my audience, you've probably determined by now that life is not always what it seems. In fact, is indeed stranger than fiction oftentimes. I have vetted as much of this man's testimony as I can in the short time since our recording. As I discover new information, I will update this recording. I hope you take it upon yourself to do your own research as well. I'm just one guy. And if we're going to turn this ship, it's going to take all of us. So help me out. Do your own research. Please correct me where I'm wrong. Send me an email to andy at theallcast.com. Uh, and please also... Send me an email to highlight the things that you found to be true and accurate. Those are just as important as things that are potentially wrong. After all, the spirit of an American is not to follow blindly, but to make courageous and bold choices based on knowledge. See, this, this always gets me, the spirit of the American. Which American is that? Is that North America, South America, Central America? And this is where the grammar becomes very important to get out of these programmed uh, ideologies. That there's something special about being an American. A Canadian is an American. A Bolivian is an American. They're a South American. 
A Mexican is an American, Central America. You see what I'm saying? That's why correct sentence structure is so important. One word, one meaning. And the people that get spun up in this patriotic type of BS, I mean, it's very easy to get people to do things um, in an extreme manner when you spin them up like this. And this is a venue and a tactic that I find that RJG uses and utilizes very well to, I guess, push his propaganda. Principles, purpose, and morals. Remember to like, follow, subscribe, and uh, leave me a review. Send me some feedback, give me your thoughts, and stick around after this episode for a debrief of this content. No Enjoy brief. the show. There we go. Okay, you can hear me okay? Oh, excellent. Awesome. Whoa. Perfect. So, yeah, so during the pandemic, I was um, I was working for a trucking company, working on diesel trucks and stuff, and then all that stuff happened, and I kind of, I saw through it, um, but then my son's mom, we were together at the time, and she found a a position in Prescott Valley for my job and it was actually like two positions down from me so I, I applied for it and my boss was like you're gonna take a huge pay cut so they ended up making a position for my current um, job so what exactly did you do on diesel trucks so the preventive maintenance repairs stuff like that so yeah. I keep them DOT compliant for running commercial interstate okay, yeah yeah so basic mechanic stuff it's, uh, it's pretty I, I only own older vehicles and so I drive 7.3 liter diesels yeah that's that's it you know it's not the it's not like the the really powerful six fours or six sevens but, yeah but I like them and so I have older trucks, even though there was a time in the quantum world where I was infiltrated by the Mossad, the CIA, the Jesuits, the Knights Templars, Israeli scientists, because of my scientific, you know, prowess of being able to take simple ore and, and make copious amounts of metal out of it. I. I attracted those people because of the court marshalings and the things I was doing, and so yeah. I, so you were already on the radar. I was. Oh yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> the when I took when I took over the world banking system, the IMF put a team on me for ten years that did a background study on me on everything that I developed. Folks, he just said he took over the banking world. Took over. This goes along with the terminology that he and David used about the flag. They captured the flag took over the world banking corporations or whatever. Do you believe that? First of all, capturing and taking over, those sound like might make right type of things. When you take over something. Now, th that may or may not be true with the take over part of it. But if you take over the world banking system, where is the evidence of this? I see no evidence of Russell J. Gould in any banking system anywhere on earth, except for the banking system that he himself promotes, the quantum banking system. So if he took over the world banking system, what is the world banking system? We don't know what that is, do we? So these are things to keep in mind to be critical of. If you're listening to someone like this making claims and because these claims that keep coming out and coming out and coming out, I'm becoming more and more vocal about it. I am not criticizing this guy. What I'm doing is asking questions and just asking for proof. Where is the proof of what the guy's saying other than the fact that he's saying it? Yes, words are coming out of his mouth, but is there anything actually to back it up? It's because I restructured the financial systems, putting the wealth back into the people, taking the power away from the mm -hmm. banking systems. Oh, yeah. They putting the wealth back into the people. Which people would that be? Not any people that I know. Are there any people that you know that have been given wealth back to? 
they're on top of me. So how does how does that 000. wealth how does that wealth exist when you take it from the banking system and put it back in the well people? the the fiction that's attacking fiction right now. What that means is the fiction is undermining their own system to set up a two tier system where the the fiction is attacking the system or the fiction is attacking the system. So by my perception and my knowledge, based upon what I know about this guy and his grammar, at least public grammar performances, what he does is fiction. So if he's talking about him attacking the fiction, fiction attacking the fiction, well then, yeah, I can see that. Of the, the normal people like us, and then they have the runaway society. And I mean, literally the one runaway society, those people live in a different world. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm friends with a couple of people in that world, and you know they have no um, empathy and no conscience for what they're doing to our society, our family, our loved ones. Yeah, and I have those conversations with them, but they don't. We don't get a chance to get intimate and go there too often because there's so many um, handlers around them. Right, yeah. and so that's a always the problem is how to get them away from their handlers and how to get them offline, so to speak. To right. You yeah. can't, can't to, get them alone in a room to fe to see what they really think and feel about something. Yeah. To have a real personal conversation. Mm -hmm. And so that's always been the challenge is how do you take um, someone that has been so privileged and get them away from their privilege or their, you know, their their wealth because mm -hmm. I mean they have butlers and everything is so you know flush for them that they they don't they have no concept of doing laundry right they yeah. have, it's just the day to day things is they 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 lack those skill sets they've never had been in a fight or they've had to pick themselves off the ground mm -hmm. and, and 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 stand their ground against all odds they don't they don't have any grasp of what the feelings are of that they honor it and respect it but they don't have any real tie to it. So they don't know what the average person is going through in the day-to-day -day struggle. Yeah. So of, it's hard to empathize with. It's, it's hard to people. Yeah. And so they don't. Yeah. And so it's so compartmentalized. I got a video from one a friend of mine and uh, this weekend. And I mean, I mean, if you saw the video and saw how flush it was, you'd be like, whoa, these people are literally, I mean, they're flying in on their own helicopters. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a definite bizarro world that you know as they've taken and sucked their wealth out and established and diversified and bought all their portfolios for all their lands or all their ships or all the things that they're involved with they lose they the, the average person they just sucked all the because they got the tariffs so high and i mean they've got the shipping war down to such a science and it is a shipping war that we find ourselves in and that's what i did was i i rerouted the ship's channels which is like uh like somebody being able to move cargo into your house here i rerouted all that and put the power back into the people so the, for the i, I for think the, the major part that i don't understand is that it's it's all based off of maritime and admiralty law yeah and so this is where the concept of studying how one foot on the sea and one foot on the land you've heard me say these statements mm -hmm. um this is where those concepts come into place is so what he's talking about right now is definitely fiction system because one foot on the land, one foot on the sea is completely unnecessary when one considers the sea of space. When I go anywhere, when I travel anywhere, when I navigate from point A to Z, I have a sea pass sea treaty that covers the jurisdiction of the sea for the sea of the space. So it doesn't matter if I'm in the water, on the land, in the air, underground, it doesn't matter where I am, I'm still in the jurisdiction of the sea of the space. So the one foot in the land, one foot in the sea, I mean, that's, it sounds exciting, I guess. And it actually sounds kind of biblical. So he could be playing into that venue as well. However, in practicality, in the practicality of the facts of the continuum, the now space that I've been navigating through for the past few years, it has no bearing on it. It does not matter. 
those are fiction limitations, fiction concepts and limitations. And if he chooses to participate with that type of stuff, you know, then that, that's up to him. That's his choice. I'm not here to tell anybody what to do. What I am telling you is that it's not necessary, especially when using correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Admiralty is more of a uh, being a, a captain, right? Uh, what we call, I spent a lot of time with U.S. Military Marine Corps uh, dealing with their shipping commissioners and fielding questions from their master sergeants about the, the protocols of moving um, sequestering goods and, and acquisition and stuff and moving soldiers. Mm -hmm. Well, the same thing holds true with the ship's captain. He's in charge of the manifest, which are the goods aboard the ship. And those goods are, um, in most cases, they've made the, through the birth certificate system, made us chattel to the, as goods. Yeah. And, and so what I did is I created the claim of the, claim of the life system where we claim our own lives and have to be accountable for what we do. And so I've built a financial system. Okay, let's let's touch on this claim of the life thing. I don't think that Colin Russell Ivan J. Colin Gould created a claim of the life system. I'm pretty sure Colin David Ivan Wynn Colin Miller created that as based on the evidence of the live life claim contained in David's book that has been available for over two decades. So it wasn't Russell that created it. He may have had a hand in it, but the majority creation of that system was Colin David Ivan Wynn Colin Miller, the man who brought forth and published correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar to the public in 1988. RJG has completely cut out David Wynn Miller in this story, taking all the credit onto himself, which I want to say, how old was David compared to Russell? I'm pretty sure Russell was at least 20 years younger than David, at least. I want to, I want to say, yeah, I'm pretty sure. And so David already had all this stuff already, most of it already established. I think what is commonly understood is that Russell brought the now space concept into quantum grammar. Like the grammar was already there. David had already established that. And then Russell brought in the now space. But as far as the claim of the live life system, I'm pretty sure David already had that uh, had uh, already had that locked in, and Russell kind of hopped in on the on the coattails. And then, of course, after David passed away, then Russell swooped in like a whatever, like like a vulture, and tried to take all the credit, which is is plainly it's it's plain to see to anyone who even does. A little bit of research and actually dives into this stuff finds that's exactly what happened and it started with the reno seminars in 2018 pawn where we don't have to be in that runaway society so let's connect those two for the people that don't know what you've done or haven't seen your videos or things like that so yes looking through um the the, the frequently asked questions on your People that don't know what you have done or have not seen your videos. The reason why he's saying it like that is because there is no proof of what he's done. The only proof is him talking on video. So I guess if you've seen Russell's videos and you've seen him talking on video, then you know what he's done. Why? Because he said so. So I guess if you see it on a YouTube video, it must be true if you're that kind of person to be so gullible. I came across one that really stood out to me that, that helped connect some dots. And that's in, uh, when the birth certificate uh, system was actually created, the country was in debt yes. and we didn't have the money to pay back the debt. Therefore, somebody took it upon themselves to use 
birth certificates as legal tender, so legal bank notes for the Federal Reserve as value against the national debt. So us as people, if we don't claim our life back in that way, because we didn't agree to that before we were born, no. and it's been thrust upon us to have a birth certificate with a number that's a legal bank note that is actual... <laughs> value against the national debt of the country well they've done much worse than that so they've set up eight channels so to speak which they can control can sell that sh bundling your birth certificate into like a sh insurance underwriting policy and they can trade it amongst themselves 24 hours a day so they've made now this part of what russell is saying i can pr i can certify that it is true because if you are a follower of this channel, you know that I put out a video about <clears throat> the certificate of birth a couple years ago, where I looked up the bar, I scanned the barcode on the birth certificate that was issued to me. And I followed the continuance of the evidence and found out that that birth certificate with the all caps name Jason Matthew Glass was indeed being traded and sold on, on Wall Street. All right. And if you go and search the videos, you will find that video. And I show all the evidence. <clears throat> I even show who at that time supposedly owned that birth certificate and what they paid for it. So this part of what he is saying, I can certify. So, and then they put a bunch of zeros down on a computer screen somewhere and then come through their gray screens and come through their agencies and their agents that are in the banks and are at the terminal heads through Langley, mainly, right, who, you know, are shot callers in what they call the uh, seven, gr seven grumpy old men system, which I took out, which was the protocols for entering tier one banking system protocols. And so I disqualified the grammar for the seven grumpy old men. And that's when the Department of Defense, the CIA, and the NSA pulled me off the streets to have a conversation with me about what that meant because I, under, I found that the protocol to slide a corporate structure was fraudulent. And I restructured that through my global postal union, and they actually traversed with me in Bern, Switzerland on June 18th, 2003. And we had a meeting about what that meant to because I'd created the first, for the first time in history of planet Earth, I'd created a new paradigm of jurisdiction called the now space. And you did that only through particular contractual grammar? Through contractual grammar and through setting up the fee freight for contract. What that means is the fee freight for your contract that most people don't comprehend is when they go to a courthouse, they file and pay a filing fee and get a file stamp on their contract. Well, the contracts worldwide were controlled by the post office because in order to go to a courthouse, you have to show your what? Your ID, your transportation contract to move you into that foreign vessel in dry dock. And what I did... <clears throat> in my case, that would be a CPAS C treaty. Or if you don't have a CPAS C treaty and you do have rudimentary closure on the grammar... You can use what's called a postmaster badge, which is not a CPAS C treaty, but it is a correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar instrument with a whole number stamp on it that basically gives closure to the fact that you are a postmaster and you are qualified to transport yourself and your cargo of thought peacefully and neutrally throughout, into, out of any venue. Postmaster badge. Now, again, you would use that if you don't have a CPAS C treaty. Because CPAS C treaty is a little bit more complex. And I highly recommend getting 100% closure on quantum grammar before you even think about using CPAS C treaty is I restructured that through our claim of the life system so we they could not place us into that ship's channel to issue a QSIP number on the case 
to monetize the so, file stamp of that paperwork. So how do you get access or authority or both to restructure that system? Well, well I was the first person in the history of mankind to come forward and realize that it was a ship's shipping war authorized by the banking systems, authorized, the banking systems got their authorization from the post office for their central countries who were, were under an umbrella corporation at the UPU. Folks, do you believe that? Do you think that he, Russell J. Gould, is the first person to do that? Or do you think Colin David Ivan Wynn, Colin Miller, was the first person to realize that? Because remember, at this time, Russell and David were living together. David is the mentor. David is the teacher. David is the master. Russell is the apprentice. And if you want proof of that claim, watch any director's party with David and Russell and watch the way they act. When David speaks, Russell shuts up. Even when David is not in the room, Russell will defer to David's authority. So it's plain to see who is the master, who is the apprentice. So do you really think that Russell was the first person to do that? Or do you think he's, again, taking credit for something that his mentor did, who, conveniently enough, is no longer with us? And I syntax their charter, and I was given access because I had studied the bankruptcies to get into the Benjamin Franklin bank books and trace the bankruptcy back to 1775. And are those publicly available? Can anybody look at those and see that well these bankruptcies happened? The, they see the forensics of it because, but because it's a national security issue, the general public isn't allowed in the door. So. Guy asked him a yes or no question. And Russell gave him this type of answer. A national security issue. So anything that you don't want to prove or certify, anything that you don't want to be called to the carpet for, just call it a national security issue. And then people are like, oh, okay, you don't have to prove it. We'll just take your word for it. So that's a problem because the general public doesn't have the knowledge on how to walk in the door and present itself. Yeah. Because it's involved in usury and the fiction like, oh, you're in usury, you're, you're giving us no facts and you have no authorization to be here. So let's go through some vocab real quick because a lot of people, including myself, don't know a lot of these terms. So we'll go through what is usury? What usury, does that mean? Usury is means that you're participating either with knowledge or without knowledge that you're using a system. The system that we're typically typically get stuck with is the the concept of showing your birth certificate to get into your elementary schools, to get your social security numbers, to get your driver's license. See, this is a usury. You're using that paperwork, your, your a ship's papers, your, your your vessel papers. You're using that to further yourself to transport yourself from point A to point B, enter, yeah. entering into the shipping war. Which also, by the way, usury, the word in and of itself, U-S-E, use, usury, U-S-U-R-Y, those are all no contract words. Because it's a vowel in front of a consonant at the beginning of a word, there's no contract. That is why many years ago, I did a salvage claim on the digraph O-E. I looked up and parsed the word usury. And I found out that it originated from a term called oite, which is O-E-T-I. Two vowels in front of a consonant, which is positive performance. So I do not use the word usury in correct sentence structure. I use the word oite because it is positive performance, because we do not use particles of negations in our facts in correct sentence structure. Um... That's correct sentence structure 101. Established system. So an established former system. Right. Because I, <laughs> I, took, I took it out worldwide for yeah. the citizens of the world in 2001 when I set up the Global Postal Union and set up the quantum banking system. 
Where I made the wrong is I had a business partner who was a counsel for the bad guys. And in that, you know, me not knowing, right? So I was given access and doors would open for me to like get into the world. Like how does a guy from Wyoming, <laughs> a reservation in Wyoming, Poda, nowhere, get into the World Bank, get into the IMF, right? Get into the International Bank of Settlements, the World Court at the Hague, right? The United yeah. Nations, that's an impossible feat unless the doors were open for me, right? And so I was given knowledge at the time and I didn't... Re well, you know, when you don't know, you're hanging out with the bad guys and you're doing things for the good and you have, you know, you love the spirit of the Constitution and the, what the founders really meant, you know, not not necessarily the words, but the, the condition of mind to create a freedom for we the people, yeah. the love of the army, our freedoms. You know, those were things that I was compelled to, to take me on my journey. So you believe that the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the amendments, the way that was all written is soundly written well no because the grammar was fraudulent see when you say independence okay. see when yeah. i started breaking so what i'm hearing here what's important to me is that he's starting to say that he didn't know what was going on so he had enough knowledge to claim to be a judge he had enough knowledge to take over the world banking system he had enough knowledge to become whatever, commander-in-chief and postmaster general, all this stuff. But he didn't have enough knowledge to know that the Clintons were bad people. He didn't have enough knowledge to know that Colin David Ivan Colin Miller was a bad guy. Does he really expect us to believe that he didn't know what a Freemason was? That he didn't know David Wynn Miller was a Freeman. <clears throat> Excuse me, a Freemason? David makes no secret of that. So the more this guy talks, the more audio and video footage that I see, hear, and witness of him, the more that I am sure that there is something rotten, something shady in the whole deal that he's presenting words yeah I, re I became cognizant that i was in a trap so when those words were written were they intentionally written don't know it wasn't there see this is this <laughs> you see what i'm saying but yeah. You look at the history lines and the storylines of why they were doing this, right? They're separating from from a, an oppressor being England who was who was suppressing their uh, concepts of faith. Their so check this out. Here's a dichotomy for you. He just said, you know, the founding fathers, whoever, they were separating from an oppressor. But at the same time, they are being the oppressor by conquering the Americas. So Russell comes from supposedly an Indian reservation in Wyoming. And yet he's sharing this type of rhetoric. Like he buys into this type of, uh, see, this is, this is a dichotomy to me because my wife is native American. She's Mohawk and Algonquin. And I know where she stands on all this stuff. So if he truly is from a reservation, then why, yeah, why would he be on board with the spirit of genocide and might makes right? Theologies of having their arms, their argument, their freedoms of the of who they were, and they tried to separate from that. And you got to comprehend that if the bad guys are smart, which they were. Right. And if you look at, you know, how they set up taxation and all the things on a global level, the things they chart, you know, f you know, followed the British crown did uh, back coming from, you know, you could chase it all the way back to Babylon, the Sumerians, the Tartarians. There's a, there's a lot of people out here with a lot of different theologies on how that came about. But when I got into studying the prefixes of words, I became cognizant that that paperwork was somehow, for whatever reason, I don't know, written in a negative content. 
And so I restructured that, and I, you know, I was given access to the books of the bankruptcies uh, through the Benjamin Franklin Post Office in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and it gave me a different storyline of what actually happened in 1776, right? Because I had different access. You know, I was given access to, if you watch the movie National Treasure, and you see yeah. Nicolas Cage, and he's up there, and he pulls back the brick and pops out some glasses. Yeah. I've actually put those glasses on, right? Oh. I, those are That's an actual thing. No yeah. way. Oh, yeah. If you, if, if, you go, if you go to Liberty Hall, you go kitty corner across Liberty Hall, and you know the paces, and you know the books, and you are with the right person in that secret society, that door opens for you, and I've actually looked through those glasses 100%. Which secret society is that? Now, that would be the secret society of the Illuminati. Okay. Yeah. Is that yeah. the same as the Masons? Well, the Masons have their symbolisms on the brick, yes. But that's, you got to remember, the Masons is just a very new concept to the world, right? It's maybe 120, 200 years old. That they, Those are stolen concepts from different doctrines. Like from different, the Knights Templar. Uh, no, the way that's stolen as well. So you've got to take this thing way back, right? So you got to go back into the Sumerians and the, some of the text back then to see how some of these call it esoteric knowledge or yeah. whatever they would call it, right? Yeah. That, where that came from. And when you study... Keep in mind also, remember what he said about the Constitution? And the guy asked him, was the Constitu Constitution written because blah, blah, blah? And then Russell said, well, I don't know. I wasn't there. Well, this is the same thing. He's making claims that the Masons are a fairly new organization. Uh, but he's making claims about Illuminati. Again, was he there? Well, he wasn't there, right? If he wasn't there for the Constitution, he certainly wasn't there for the creation of the Illuminati or the creation of the Freemasons. So how would he know that for sure? So keep that in mind as you're listening to this some of the concepts of things like alchemical weddings or some of those paradigms with celestial space cognition right. and tie it all into what they were doing. They were working on setting up paradigms to open up gates to bring in, you know, bad things. So like spiritual gates. And spiritual gates. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So okay. that And that's what the ley lines and some of the things that the, the in the Internet – global banking, these are the, the things that I now have the command on. This is what gives me a very unique, that's why I was able to get into the Vatican and the places, because I had knowledge and sat down with the Catholic cardinals, the school cardinals, and they grilled me for 72 hours on some of these things. What did he just say? He just said, the reason why he was able to get into the Vatican and these other places, be because he had the knowledge. What's that mean, folks? Authority comes from knowledge. If you know what it is you're doing, you can do it. He just said it. How did he get into the Vatican? Because he had the knowledge. It's the same thing with correct sentence structure, communication, policy, syntax, grammar. I highly recommend not letting anyone push you to think otherwise. If you know what it is you're doing, if you know the one by 1.9 grammar flag constitution and you have closure on the grammar you can most certainly use it to do the same stuff he's doing or has claims to have done navigating through the sea of space authority comes from knowledge they couldn't believe i knew all this stuff i'm like i don't know just it's in my mind it just rattles off yeah right? it just goes on and on for hours and hours days and days so with um so we talked about usury a little bit with parse syntax grammar. Yes. Um, two questions about that. First of all, how do you define that? What is parse syntax grammar? But, so parse is breaking down words and finding the root word of the, where it came from, looking at the prefixes and the past tense suffixes. And the past tense suffixes are like an ED at the end of the world, like united. Yeah. Right? ED moves you into the past. So does united have now time jurisdiction? No. As, it, as in, for people who don't understand what that means, is does that apply now. right now? No. You're united, but united, ED, the suffix means to move you into a past tense scenario. So it moves you out to the out. And the U at the beginning of the word is no because it's a vowel in front of a consonant. So it's a double negative in the word united. 
quantum of the now. Now, the quantum is a breaking down of the quanta, which is the pluralisms that allowed everything to come to its least common denominator point to come to a conclusion about what the fact is now. And we're seeing that in the court systems now where the judges are following the protocol, doing a very good job. I trained them very well globally where they're saying nobody's presenting any facts here. We can this is false and misleading. And so they're they're throwing out good people that probably have good volition to fix society. They're throwing out their lawsuits right and left under, well, you're not bringing any facts here. And everybody's confused because the judge is saying, well, in my court, I do this. And it doesn't, they don't understand that they've set up foreign jurisdictions. They don't understand how the shipping world works to get into the place. And then the people that are filing the lawsuits were foolish enough to engage in usury and use file stamps on a court system that doesn't have authorization anymore. So it's a sad thing for me to sit back and watch as good people are spending their hard-earned equity to think that they're going to come to an outcome to go to a system that doesn't exist anymore. And so it's a harvesting mechanism against the people of planet Earth. It's a good financial business for those who are doing it, yeah. right? And it's unfortunately, it keeps the, the citizen in bondage and tied back to their birth certificate position, mm -hmm. back to your usual original word of usury, yeah. right? And this is, this is what I've done is I've, I've moved the goalpost, so to speak, and moved off of that past tense and future tense. He just said move the goalposts. If you're familiar with what I've been teaching about the trivium, or not teaching, but what I've been mentioning about the trivium method, moving the goalposts is literally a logical fallacy where you establish terms and conditions, and then when something unforeseen happens, all of a sudden you change the terms and conditions to fit your bias. So it's a logical fallacy, moving the goalposts paradigm and placed everything to accountability on volition of now where we don't have that negativity in our now space where we're given the freedom to knit our own ties our own communities our own paradigms to help the planet bring not angst or division into the theater because now you can put the volition or the condition of mind on trial so the quantum grammar allows us to finite because you can use the prepositional phrase to create the fact the facts were done in this way in, in the now space now what is the condition of thinking to create that paradigm of thought yeah. did it create harm did they, did you try to purposely vaccinate or what did you put in the yeah, it's a I have a solution to what he's saying. And this solution was created by colon Raven hyphen Farhad hyphen Tohidi colon Afarim many years ago. And the solution is called a fate writ volition claim. If you have a live life claim using correct sentence structure and you have closure on the grammar, or at least a rudimentary closure on the grammar, you can create what is known as a fate writ volition claim, which is basically you giving closure to your volition in a document contract postal vessel court venue. You put down the terms and conditions of your conduct. That way, someone like Russell doesn't have to ask, well, what was your condition of mind? What was your volition? Why did you do that? You can just give them the fate writ volition claim and say, here's my fate writ volition. Where's yours? So I'll bet you dollars to donuts, he doesn't have one. I'm going to start really finding out and claiming what's been done in the now space. And this is the value of the prepositional phrase grammar is you preset the facts because the facts don't change. Facts are what they are. You can't put a fact on trial because a court can't try a fact. Can't argue a fact. Facts are facts. He keeps using the word preposition. PRE means no. There is, preposition means no position. In the domain of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, what in the fiction would be known as a preposition would be known as a positional. Positional. You have positionals, you have lodials, and you have facts. You have verbs and you have conjunctions. Those are the parts of speech of quantum grammar. 
but only try the condition of mind. So putting the condition of mind on trial, not the facts, is where the real value of the the correct communication parse syntax grammar is it, it allows us to craft the harness of time and space to now put things into neutrality of zero point to articulate the facts of negativity and now break down hey what to articulate the facts of negativity why would you want to what Hold on a minute. All right, I'm just going to bring it to a stop there. <clears throat> Articulate the facts of negativity. With correct sentence structure, it's all about positivity, making positive performance claims. Now, you can make a, ne a claim of uh, damage, right? But there is no negative, because if you put a zero in a multiplication problem, it zeroes the entire thing out. So one would not make a claim of facts of negativity. That may sound like fancy talk and, ooh, you know, he may be impressing the, the host and things like that, which I guess I'll have to go back and listen some other time to see what the host's impression of him is. But keep in mind, I'm going to reiterate this and go back to this. The majority of times Russell has ever been a guest on someone's podcast or... He's come in contact with other internet personalities such as David Avocado Wolf, Sasha Stone, Lady Crown, Ramallah, uh, Ramallah, I can't think of her whole name. Um, she was a journalist or is a journalist. You know, these people, it seems to always turn sour. Something always goes wrong and either he never mentions them again or he badmouths them. Why is that? It always starts off good, but then it turns sour. Why is that? Anna Von Reitz. That's a great example. Anna Von Reitz. I can tell you why. <laughs> it's my guess, all right? It's my guess. It's my perception. It's not a fact. It's just a guess because I wasn't there for these situations. But I can say, I can guess that these people... After they get to know, after they start to get to know Russell, start to see the bullshit, start to see the subterfuge, start to see, oh, well, this guy doesn't actually have closure on the grammar he's talking about. He's saying a bunch of cool, fancy words, but when you really try and dig down and get to the bottom of it, they don't make any sense articulate the facts of negativity what are you talking about dude so i think that's what happens number one and number two i think that russell likes to be in charge and he wants people to bow down to him he wants people to acknowledge his leadership as long as you bend down and kiss the ring and kiss his ass now you're allowed to be free. Now you can join his little system. But if you don't do that, he will go out of his way to slander you, say you're not authorized, badmouth you. All of his little minions and cult followers will badmouth you. Trust me, I know this. I've been through it. Years ago. Actually, it went on for a few years. But I found out what they're really all about. And one thing I can say for sure is Russell J. Gould and his construct are not about correctness in the context of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. They seem to be more about control and um, making a buck off that control, I guess. So, yeah, it is what it is. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like and I'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.
Thank you.